everyone. My name is Will Button. I'm, on the I'm a DevOps engineer for Trax Technologies, and I'm also an instructor and author for Egghead.io and Pluralsight.com. Well, if you've ever played with Elasticsearch, it's pretty easy to get up and running. If you've ever tried to get it to scale, it might feel like you're in a battle. At Trax, our first introduction to Elasticsearch was part of Logstash. We have Logstash nodes in each data center that write back to a central Elasticsearch cluster. Now, if you're not familiar with George Armstrong Custer, He's famous for Custer's last stand, where in 1876, he was decisively defeated by the Plains Indians tribes at the Battle of Little Bighorn. So the Battle of Little Bighorn and Trax's first use of Elasticsearch aren't as unrelated as you might think. We found it incredibly easy to correlate and aggregate events from all across the servers, regardless of where they came from. So we were just super excited. We were like, oh man. This Elasticsearch stuff is sweet. We should just use it for everything. What could possibly go wrong? Well, turns out a lot. So when things did start to go wrong, we didn't really have the right monitoring in place. So from our perspective, we thought Elasticsearch used to work so great. Now Elasticsearch doesn't work at, at all. Clearly, the problem is with Elasticsearch, right? Well, as the servers started to crash, and they started to crash more frequently, it would take the entire cluster down, so we had to restart every single node in the cluster. And since the servers were unresponsive or completely inaccessible, this took a lot of time. To help automate this process, we created a job in our runbook server called the Hammer. Now, don't act shocked whenever I tell you that this doesn't actually solve the problem, because it doesn't. But what it did do is it bought us time to start building a monitoring system so we can collect the metrics and try to understand what's going on inside the cluster. We started collecting data from the API endpoints provided by Elasticsearch for nodes, cluster, and health status. And then we realized we have an advantage that Custer didn't have. We could create an entirely new battlefield, change the parameters, and try to produce a different outcome. And so that's what we did. And since it felt like we were in the Battle of Little Bighorn, this is how Custer got its name. Our new cluster? Well, we named the new cluster Winston because we were never, never, never giving up on this. With two clusters side by side, we were able to compare the metrics. And most metrics were pretty much on par with each other, with the exception of the JVM heap utilization. In our new cluster, we had this nice sawtooth pattern for garbage collection. In the original cluster, there was little to no garbage collection at all. So using our new monitoring system, we were able to define triggers that would alert us when any server reached a certain threshold for JVM heap utilization, we could pull that server from the cluster and prevent the entire cluster from going down. The JVM heap itself, well, that was telling us that we were trying to serve up more data than we actually had the capacity for. So we needed to either increase the number of nodes in the cluster or shut down indices that were no longer in use. In the end, it turns out that the problem really wasn't the battlefield at all. The failure was on our part to show up with the right resources necessary to win the battle. That meant measuring what goes in, what goes out, and the health of the servers out on the battlefield. A key part of any incident management is the retrospective. What did we do right and what can we improve on for next time? We all agreed that we should have done a better job of monitoring from day one and get those early indicator analysis graphs. The other thing is that Elasticsearch provides the monitoring from the API itself. So whenever the cluster goes down, you lose your ability to monitor it. So we started monitoring the API calls through the load balancer to get an external perspective. Teamwork was critical. Whether your people were coming up with ideas, tools, or sometimes just a pat on the back to let us know it was going to be OK, it took a team effort for ev from everyone to find the root cause on this. And that had to happen in a blame-free environment. When you introduce a new technology, you're going to find new ways to fail. So it's important to have an environment where you can raise your hand and say, I messed up, knowing that everyone's going to fo focus on what failed, not who failed. If you want to see how we do automatic monitoring across dynamically scaling servers today, we've published that at bit.ly slash Custer's Cluster. And if you want to recommend a good art school for me to improve my drawing, you can do so on Twitter. I'm at WF Button. Thank you, guys.